we will see some special reactions of phenol. Under that, the first one is a cold base reaction. So here, first we take phenol, treat it with sodium. We will get the sodium salt of phenol. That is like this. O N A. Okay. So here, this one we will treat it with carbon dioxide. This is the main compound here. So let us now divide this into minus and this one as plus. Okay. So now see here the minus will move here and this double bond electron will move here. So here when we want to divide carbon dioxide into plus and minus, so this one will be minus and this will be plus. Okay. So we will get a compound like this. That is C O minus double bond O. And we will get double bond because this electron has moved here. This one will become O. Okay. So now Na plus whatever has come out will combine with this to give you double bond O, CONA, and double bond O. Okay. So this on further hydrolysis using H plus will give you. So this will become OH here and we will get COOH. Okay. So this is called salicylic acid. That is a common name and the IUPAC name is orthohydroxy or the hydroxy. The trivial name is called orthohydroxy benzoic acid. So we have seen that salicylic acid is a very important compound because it is used for the preparation of aspirin. The next very important reaction is called rimer timer reaction. So here we treat phenol with chloroform in the presence of a base like sodium hydroxide. First we get an intermediate like this, ONA and CHCl2, a hydrogen here from this carbon and Cl will get removed as HCl. So this would be the intermediate. Okay. This on treatment with NaOH will give you so the CHCl2 will get converted to an aldehyde followed by hydrolysis in the presence of H plus, we will get compound like this OH and CHO. So this is called salicylaldehyde. Just like how we, how we prepared salicylic acid, this is salicylaldehyde where we in this here we have a CHO group. Okay. So now uh, the mechanism for this reaction is very important. So let us see the mechanism. So when what happens here is like you know they might ask you what is the electrophile here. The chloroform will react with the base okay OH minus to form compound CCL3 which will be forming CCL2. So now this one is an electrophile. So this is called dichlorocarbon okay. So this is an electrophile because you know it has now carbon will have only 6 electrons here okay. So this will act as an electrophile. So this electrophile will attack the phenol here forming like you know compound intermediate compounds like this. So we can see in the last two steps when we use a base here okay. So we will this CHCl2 will get converted to CHO. So now if you want a H here we have to do hydrolysis in the presence of H plus will give you salicylaldehyde. This is also called orthohydroxy benzaldehyde. So the next reaction is oxidation of phenols. So when we uh, use oxidizing agent like you no know, sodium dichromate in the presence of H plus that is we use acidified dichromate as an oxidizing agent. So this will form benzoquinone like this. So this is called benzoquinone. But even in the presence of you know uh, normal oxidation like you know atmosphere with atmospheric oxygen, 
it can form like you know a mixture of quinones which is a dark colored compound. Now coming to the last reaction that is the reaction with thallic anhydride. Okay, so here you can see that we have taken thallic anhydride. Okay, so thallic anhydride is produced from thallic acid. Like you know, when we remove water, we get thallic anhydride. This on reaction with two molecules of phenol. So now we have to write phenol like this. So here we know there is a hydrogen with this carbon. Okay, so when we treat it with H2SO4, that is it's a dehydrating agent. So this water molecule gets eliminated like this to give you a compound like this C double bond O ok. So here it gets connected. So we know this O is gone. So now here we will connect it like this. So the H and H gets removed reacts with this double bond O to give you a compound like this. So this compound is called phenophthalene. So we would have heard that phenophthalene is a very good indicator for acid base titration. So apart from uh, like you know use which is used as an indicator, it can also be used as an antiseptic in soaps and lotions. Then also it reacts with formaldehyde to form like you know bakelite like this, it polymerizes. So it has so many uses like so that is why this phenophthalene is a very important compound in the pharmaceutical industry.